Hello folks and welcome back. So I know it's been a few days, we've been, we've been in the middle of moving and it took just a little bit longer to get back to it than I thought it would, but we're back. So in the last one we fixed up our interaction and gear system a little bit, but there is one thing I forgot to do. So inside the player blueprint on the use item, on the change sword where we're checking to see if our sword is out, then we're destroying and updating. We want to do the same thing with the shield, so I'm just going to hook that right there to that because if the sword is out and we're equipping a shield then we want it to go ahead and destroy and update as well so with that done let's get into updating our camera system so that when we pull our sword out we get ready for the combat so I'm gonna go into the event graph and I'm gonna find some clear room and I'm gonna create two custom events first one is going to be, let me zoom in, first one is going to be called melee cam shift which we'll probably end up using this for the ranged also but we're gonna, I'm gonna leave it named like this for now because we might set up the cameras or the range, the bow and arrows camera a little bit differently so I'm gonna create one more custom event called melee cam reshift or deshift or unshift whichever you like to call so we're gonna call these events when we draw our sword out so that it updates our camera location gives us an easier time get it, oh sorry I was testing something so when we draw our sword I want to call the shift so melee cam shift on that one and then the other one on the putting the sword of the way or the sheathing of it so what we want to do for these events is we want to add a timeline now a timeline is good when you're trying to lerp between certain things or you want to update something over a set period of time just like it says so I'm gonna I'm gonna just call this one cam shift I'm going to hook the shift to the play and the reshift to the reverse. And then I'm going to double click and open this up. So this is where you can establish all the properties of your timeline. For this one, uh, it's just going to have a float track, which there are all kinds of different tracks. Uh, basically, the main one I ever use is the float. I think I've used the vector like one time. but. <laughs> So we're going to add a float track and this is going to be the speed or the alpha which will basically establish the time at which it will shift between what we're about to set up. So I'm going to right click at the beginning of the graph. Oh actually let's set the length real quick. So I want it to be either half a second or a second. I'm going to start with 0.5. We can always update this pretty easily. So I'm going to right click and add a key to the curve float so I'm going to set its time and value both to zero so that puts it right at the beginning of yeah. then I'm going to right click anywhere else and add another key and I want its time to be at the end of our graph so it'll be 0.5 on the time and the value here is going to be 1 so what we're, go what we're going to be updating uh, the alpha will be switching between 0 which is inactive to 1 which is fully active so I'm going to box select both of those and then you'll see this zoom to fit horizontal it just makes it to where this takes up our full graph so we can kind of customize these so I'm going to right click and then here's a this is called key interpolation which is basically how it moves from this one to this one so you can either set it up yourself I don't know what that means I don't really know what that <laughs> means you can flatten it and straighten it to where it's just a straight line uh, I usually just do auto which I've noticed in Unreal Engine 5, it doesn't really work like it's supposed to. But it will give us these little handles. So basically we're just going to be doing the user float after all. So we'll just do user. And I'm going to pull this down to about in line with that line. I don't want it to go under it because then it will go backwards before it starts. So I'm going to just kind of right there above it so that it gives us that kind of like nice swooping curve instead of just being a straight line all the way up and I'm going to highlight the other one 
zoom in a little bit and then also pull it down to where it kind of smoothly transitions out of it I don't want it to go above one so you can check the value by hovering your mouse cursor over it and you want to make sure it's always below one or yeah below one and above zero so yeah it's looking all right so I also want it to ignore time dilation so that if we open our menu while we're drawing our weapon it'll go ahead and just skip straight to the end of, or it'll operate at normal speed so I'm going to go back into the event graph compile real quick and you'll see this little speed function is, uh, or float has appeared that wasn't there before so what we want to update we want our camera to move in closer to the character and we want it to move to the side a little bit so that when we're in combat we'll be able to see our enemy a little bit better so the way we're going to do this is we're going to affect the camera boom so I'm going to pull it out and if you remember the camera boom is this little red line that holds the camera off the player So back in the event graph I want to set its arm length which the target arm length is how close it is to the character I think it's defaulted at 300 so I want to set target arm length we'll hook that right to the update and then I want to set the socket offset now there are two offsets when it comes to your camera boom there is the socket offset and then a target offset so the socket offset let me demonstrate that one first real quick so you'll see now that the camera is off of the character a little way. so let me put it back and then you'll see it moves out now if you do the target offset it does almost the exact same thing but the difference comes when in actual play so I'm gonna set the socket offset to 50 real quick and then you'll see when I move around the character she stays in the same spot on the camera even though she's offset from the center of it but if I set that back down and I set the target offset it looks the same in here but when I come out here you'll notice it kind of floats around or she moves on the screen so if I'm facing this way she's on the left if I'm facing that way she's on the right I, I don't personally like that so now you'll see regardless of which way I face she stays right where she's supposed to so that's the difference between the socket and the target and I'm gonna set this back to zero so now in the event graph I'm gonna hook this to the end of that one drag this over a little ways kind of clean this up a little bit so the reason I'm moving it so far away is because from the target arm length I'm not gonna set it here I'm going to drag off and type in lerp now this is going to give us a linear interpolation float for this one which we're gonna hook the speed to the alpha so this goes from 0 to 1 and at 0 it's at this number and at 1 it's at this number so it'll update us along those numbers at that rate so that it's a smooth transition in and out so our arm length let's see it's at 300 so I'm gonna set 300 on the A and let's play around with it let's see, see what we can find what that might be too close let's see 225 maybe yeah 175 let me set the offset too so we can establish its final point did I hit target offset oh oops socket offset that's right so that's looking decent let me try putting on a weapon real quick whoa 
That's right. I already have those set up to do stuff. I'm going to disconnect those real quick. Mm. I'm also going to go ahead and move my camera boom up. I usually like it to be about shoulder, right right between the shoulder blades basically. So this won't have any effect on the uh, the timeline thing we just set up, it'll just, let's see. Maybe a little bit more of an offset. 75, that might be too much. So a lot of it is just kind of playing around and figuring out what looks good for what you want. So when we pull the sword out, I think this is looking good for now. We might tweak it a little bit, or I might tweak it a little bit later. You can play around with it, find the values you want. But I'm going to set mine to this for now just so we can go ahead and get get started. So I got it 175 and 75. I'm going to hook these back up real quick. So it's going to go from 300 to 175. Now from our socket offset we're going to lerp this also and lerp the vector. So it'll move from this vector to this vector based on the same alpha. So that they move at the same time. So right now I think it's just zero across the board. Well, it's, it will be. So I'm going to set it, leave it at zero there. I'm going to set it to 75. Now, the offsets move as a vector, so they have the X, the Y, and the Z. So you want to make sure you put your value in the right box. So since I'm moving it left and right of the character, it's on the Y axis. The x-axis will move it forward and back, and the z-axis moves it up and down. So I'm going to leave it at zero and put that back to 300. So that we're at our base starting position. So now we can test it real quick. So looks alright. I might move it down a little bit actually. Let me grab a weapon. Point 0.5 might be a little bit quick. Let me try putting it at 1. So if you want to adjust the time, you'll just open your cam shift back up, adjust the length of it, and then this, the ending points, ending keyframes time. So just like that, I can set it to 1. It doesn't, it doesn't undo the curve we put on it. So I'll just compile that real quick. Grab me a weapon. Yeah, it's looking a little bit nicer, a little bit smoother. So that we can then start moving into our. Oh, she does not jump at all. So let's fix that also real quick so that when you're armed and you jump she does like she's supposed to. So first in the event graph, let us go to our jump function and we're going to move the button or the action event back and I'm going to add a branch. So if she's changing equipment, I don't want her to be able to jump. So I'll just hook check to see if she's changing equipment and if she's not then she can jump so down here on our drawing a weapon or sheathing the weapon we want to set that she's also changing equipment so I'm gonna hook both ends up to this because regardless of whether she's drawing the sword or putting the sword away she's changing her equipment and then what we can do is from an animation notify 
or if you if you're having to use delays just however long the uh, animation is then you would just set a delay for that length and then set that back to false but let's go into the characters and go into the animations blueprint and then in our state machine I'm gonna find my let's see sheathing sword pause that I'm gonna set at the very very end I'm gonna right click and add a notify called finished. I'm going to move it all the way to the end as far as it'll go. Well maybe not as far just about there be good. And then on the withdrawing sword animation I'm going to add it right there also. Same notify finished. So then in the event graph We'll search for that animation notify. I'm going to pull out another player reference because I only like to use, I don't like for wires to get all crossed up so I only use one at a time. But we'll set our changing equipment back to false. Now we don't have to set up an event inside the player, we can just directly change that boolean back. So now if I try to jump while I'm changing weapons I can't but as soon as she's done then she can jump so one more thing to do in our state machine in our armed the blend space where she's got the sword out and she's running around ready for something to whack we want to do a blend by bool we'll hook our armed to the false because we want to check to see if she's jumping and if she is, then we just want to play that that falling loop animation. So just like that, now she can't jump if she's pulling a weapon, but as soon as she's not pulling a weapon, she actually looks like she's jumping. So that's looking a bit better. And in the next one, we will start going into the combat system. So also we are going to be updating the gear system a little bit later on uh, to make it to where when you don't have a weapon equipped that it it appears on your side so we'll go into that in a little bit later on uh, but for now let's get to the combat system because that's gonna be fun so <laughs> alright I will see you all in the next one bye bye